We had a situation in the Reckonist Peninsula of Iceland that the Svartsang volcanic system is continuing to accumulate magma under it, but no tremors or major tremors under it is visible. In this uh, earthquake uh, model that we are, I've shown, the magnitude of the earthquakes are shown by the circles. And what we see is that in the Christovic volcanic system, under the clear forward, is actually a rising of the earthquake to the depth of the 5 kilometer from the 10, 9 kilometer up to there. And that means uh, the earthquakes are opening up the, uh, the way for the uh, magma from the reservoir, which is the mantle, rise to where it's practically like a tap in that uh, 5 kilometer depth and then eventually erupt because the extension in that area is uh, uh, leading from one volcanic system, one fault uh, graben system, to the next one. The only difference probably is the location between them and, and the weakness and uh, you know stress level. And when the cracks open up and the magma can actually flow through it freely because it has pressure, is is under pressure from the from within the mantle and the crust over it, and is hot also. It can rise and melt and form uh, a magma which can erupt through the different uh, gravens. Every one of those gravens is a volcanic system. So Krisovik is actually more likely now to have a, a magma accumulation under it, gathering pace. We see it in the tremors map, as you can see from the Reckoners Reach to the. Reckonist Peninsula, we have most of the earthquakes concentrated in the middle of the image. You can see that they're coming in cluster. And some may say it's related, and I was one of those people, related to the tides. And we are near in the full moon. Of course, you can see in the full moon, uh, machinery is working and the shifts are running as normal every six hours. The moonlight helps the werewolves or is encouraging the human beings to come out and just do the work. So we see this caterpillar effect. This is the first time I described it uh, many months ago, and now you can see that again it's happening. We are near the full moon. You may say the workers are out because it's full moon. They have enough light. Or it's good weather. Now we had a, a period of storms. They were not active like what was in the center of this diagram. Now they're active again every six hours, shift uh, of 12 hours. So they come for, you know, for toilet, for eating every six hours, the 10 of the machinery or change a shift and then go. Uh, earthquakes uh, and the possibility of the eruption in these areas are well known. I think that probably it will be again in the north most likely. Then probably around the area in the Hagerfall, Sundunka craters, and more or less likely towards the Grindavik or towards the sea uh, to the west side of the Grindavik. I have already suggested to build a wall, a uh, defensive uh, wall, uh, to retain the lava. And I'm happy that it has been listened to. They have built a wall there, my colleagues there. Is magic. And I suggested, based on the experience of the Iranian people, to contain the fluids, not just water, mud flows and other things. They build this kind of, of um, berms or walls along the pathway of the water fluid is coming to build similar things for the Grindavik and probably abandon the central part, which is more likely to have an eruption in the case that it happens, and gradual, gradually transfer the infrastructure to the east and west side of this central part of the Graben. We have a peninsula there which can be used and is again having access to the harbor. And we can do the same for the Krisovic volcanic system which reaches probably the Reykjavik. I will have a separate video about that.